two weeks psyched out after this weekend in Calgary. Not one of them has managed to come through that last dinner in any kind of shape at all. And you see Fokushev coming into the outside lane, losing the race. They're liable to leave that Soviet team here to practice till the Olympic start so they can learn to read that corner. It's amazing how many problems they've encountered there, and especially the Soviet Tom. Perhaps it's their skating style, I don't know. Well, this track is a technician's track. It's very, very, very fast. And if you have an, a background in short track skating, if you have good technical background, you can handle the last dinner. If you're just a big, strong skater, you'll have more problem. And that's what we've seen consistently over the World Cup competition. Now we have from Australia, Phil Tamides, and he is in the loud green suit. Red. And on your viewing right on the left is Marcel Tremblay from St. Foy, Quebec, and there we have a false start, probably charged to Tamidis, and each skater's allowed one false start. That's right, you get one false start, and after that you're disqualified. The problem with having one, especially in the sprint race, is it makes you kind of camp on the line. You can't lean, you can't take any chances. So it, in the sprints, it's a real disadvantage to have one false start. It helps if you're able to get away with it. Go Starters are good, they're start. not gonna let you do it. There you see a view of this oval, which is sold out here today. Somewhere over 4,000 spectators watching this event, the first World Cup event ever held in Canada. They have 19 countries. They have close to 120 skaters, a remarkable entry. Really? There is Marcel Trombley of Canada in his very distinctive Canadian suit, and now he false starts. That means there's a false start charge to both of them, and one more from either, and they're disqualified. Well, it's a bit of a, a tactic by uh, by uh, Marcel there, knowing that Tominci's had a false start and had to stay on the line. He thought if he could lean, maybe get away with something there. Didn't work. Now they both have a false start, and they're both going to have to really wait no, until the gun start. sounds. Remember the first place time here by Bay of the Republic of South Korea, 37.08. Neither one of these skaters are expected to challenge that. However, Marcel Trombley is the best time of 38.37. There is Tamidas in the position and Trombley of Canada. And this time we have a race and Trombley, the 22-year-old from St. Foy is underway and the Canadian crowd urge him on to great things. The Canadian crowd has been great here today. It's so good to hear the Canadians getting cheered for so many years. They've been tourists in other countries. Now they're back home and the crowd is really spurring them on. That's Trombley going around the outside. He'll cross to the inner. Tamidas will cross to the outer. There's Trombley, moves out of that inner lane. He's got those arms a-pumping. Now he drops them a bit. He rides the corner well, but remember the Canadians have been training here all the time, and here he comes for home. An excellent last corner, and listen to the crowd. Give this young Canadian a real ride for home as he comes down to the finish. And the time is 38.29. That's good for 20th position, and that is his best time ever. Best time ever for Canada's Marcel Trombley. Live from Calgary, the Coors World Cup Speed Skating Championship. Okay, Jan Ikeman, Dan Jensen in the 500 meters, a race that was taped earlier.